This is the Provoke Prawn, and this insane looking thing is the Azeron Cyborg. Now, I actually saw this mental looking controller advertised on Instagram a good few months ago, and I wanted to get my hands on it because it's an interesting device for a number of reasons. And there are several different versions of it. You can customize it in a number of different ways. For example, mine has glow in the dark keys. So those white keycaps that you can see are glow in the dark. You can customize them in different colors. There's also different shapes. There's a nameplate that you'll see in a second that I've added on. And this is an interesting alternative to using a gaming keyboard. It's essentially a unusual looking keypad with access to multiple different buttons per finger. And the idea here is it's a more natural position for your hand. You can sit it in a comfortable position, in an ergonomically safe position. You can also adjust the positioning of the key switches, as in the fingertips design, the claw of it. They're both in and out and sort of up and down. And I'll show you more of that as we go into the video. You also see that you can customize and personalize it with your own name, although you are limited on characters, obviously. Now, this isn't cheap, so it's quite a big investment for something I wasn't sure I was going to like. And what I will say is that I do like it, but it's going to take some getting used to. I feel like if your brain is flexible enough to cope with new control methods, then you might not have a problem with it. It is, as you can see from the box, a unique device and certainly unusual. I've tried keypads in the past with a sort of classic traditional sort of design where they've basically just cut off part of a keyboard and tried to put it as an external keypad this is a very different experience because of that ergonomic layout of it you'll note for example that you would have seen that it has a joystick on the side of it it comes in a box with some interesting highlights now i, I think it's worth noting that this came from the eu and that meant that i had to pay tax on it it was already expensive and then i had to pay import duties on it so it was even more expensive so it is quite a big ask. It's worth bearing in mind that that might happen to you if you live in the UK. I'm not sure about other countries, but it was a bit of a pain to have to pay extra customs duties on this. I did purchase it myself, though, so this isn't sponsored by them. But I do want to show off what I like about it and what I don't. Now, out of the box, it's quite an interesting look. You can see from the close up shots of it, that it's kind of 3D printed in various different parts. And that certainly comes across. It also has some nice styling and it blatantly has all that sort of Azeron look and feel to it. And I think is a nice sort of box put, they've put together that's environmentally friendly with um, lots of cardboard and not very much plastic. So that's certainly a bonus. Included in the box, you also get a USB cable, which isn't micro, it's a mini USB cable. You also have the choice of different joystick thumb caps and it comes with its own little screwdriver. Now that screwdriver is an essential part of the equipment because you can use that to adjust the tightness and the positioning of the keys. And I'll show you more on that in a minute. Yeah, it comes with three tips and it's a good premium quality actually. A nice quality screwdriver that would be a good addition to the setup. You'll also find several screws included. Some of them seem to be extra and some are necessary because they were removed for the shipping and you'll need to install them to make sure you've got access to it. You have a braided USB cable which plugs in on the left hand side of the device and I'll show you that in a minute. The thing that struck me first, as I said, is that uh, some of it looks very 3D printed and maybe verging on being cheap. But when you put your hand on it, I was struck immediately by the comfort of it. It's obvious when you start to use it, even just getting it out of the box. So this is going to be a lot more comfortable than using a keyboard. If, like me, you use a keyboard all day long for working purposes, and then you go into the evening and use that same keyboard for gaming, then you'll probably think, that your fingers are getting tired, you're worried about RSI. I actually have a little bit of RSI on my pinky because I'm just copying and pasting and using control and putting your hand into a claw position to use WASD can eventually lead to some pain in your fingers, which isn't ideal. This thing, as you can see from the shots, is a lot more ergonomic. It has an ergonomically shaped sort of hand rest, so your hand sits in a much more comfortable position. Also, you have access to a multitude of switches and keys, and I'm going to be quiet for a minute so you can hear some of the clicking on them. Mm. 
Those buttons are actually remarkably satisfying to press and easy to access. And because you have access to a multitude of keys per finger, it feels like you've got more potential for controls. And this is all adjustable within the software, which I'll show you later on. Also, as you can see, the tops, you can reposition them so you can get them closer or further away from your finger, depending on your preference, because you have access to different buttons in different directions. So you can flick your finger up and hit that one on the sort of claw that sits above your finger, or you can push down towards the back of your hand and left and right and in. So it is really hard to sort of put across how wonderful this is, but there's a lot of potential for it. You do, however, obviously have to reprogram, remap the keys into a layout that'd be useful in your game. And then you have to remember what keys go where, but you can do it in a logical way that fits with your play style and the games you're going to be playing. And I think that when you tweak it over time, you'll probably find that it suits you down to a T. You can also see that you can adjust them in a number of different ways. So there are screws on the underside where you can adjust where the button sits. So you can move them in and out and sort of side to side as well. I'll show you some extension of that in a second. So not only adjusting the tops that sit over the top of your fingers, but also where your fingers are going to sit. So this makes it a lot more viable in terms of the ergonomics of it and how you're going to position it for your own personal setup. Now, when it comes out of the box initially, you'll see that it's sort of all folded in on itself. You can actually move each of the fingers side to side and spread them out. You can move the buttons in and out, as I said, back and forth. So you have some adjustment in multiple different directions to customize that fit and how it's going to sit in your hand. And I think this is a very important part of it. And it's really nice because obviously you don't have that on a standard keyboard. You have to put your fingers in a set position and that's where they're always going to be. On the right hand side, you'll also note there's a joystick and you can adjust the position of that. And you can actually use that for movement as well. So depending on what sort of games you're playing, you could use that to move around and all the buttons for other things, or you can assign buttons to replace WASD and shift. You also have another button on the side that you can get just access to from the joystick too. So you have access there. Now, when you fold that out, you'll note there's a hole on the underside and that is where one of the screws that's included in the box. There's instructions on how to set this up included are fairly straightforward. And basically it warns you that you need to put this screw in because it's it's included in the bag, but it's removed for transport purposes so that this doesn't get damaged. So you just need to fold it out into that position and then screw it down. But you can still adjust the positioning of it. And you'll see there's multiple different points on the underside and on top and all around it, basically, where you can tweak and adjust the fitment of it. And it's very important to do this. And I think the initial process of doing this means you have to spend quite a bit of time with it practicing where you're going to fit playing with some games with it, finding that you're probably not got it in quite the right position and you need to reposition things finding that you need to remap things in the software it is worth noting and i'll show you a bit more in the software that you can have different profiles set up as well so it is possible to have multiple different profiles for different games so you also have potential for changing things and the way they work there you'll see the position of the joystick can also be adjusted as well so you can move that up and down as well and position it in a way you want so there's a button on top of that too and you can tweak all of these things so it's highly customizable this is obviously the customization you get after it's been delivered if you visit the website which i'll link to in the description you'll also find that you can customize different models so there's three different models cyborg classic and compact you can customize the button design the colors and things as i said i've opted for one that glows in the dark which unfortunately i can't show you that effect because it is and very difficult to capture on camera and to be honest the glow isn't as bright as i would have expected or hoped which is a shame but you can get multi-colored keys i kind of like mine because it's quite understated but you can get for multi-colored designs you can also get different levels of joystick controls and other things and a nameplate and other additional things that you can add on to it which add to the expense but basically personalizing it to your own personal taste now, when I initially played with this, I was thinking that I wasn't going to like it because I'm quite an old dog and an old man, and I didn't think I was going to be able to get on with it. I was really worried that it would feel nice to use, but then I wouldn't be able to handle it. I was actually surprised by how quickly I picked it up and how easy it is to use. And you can immediately see the potential of it in terms of where your fingers are going to go, what buttons you could program to what, and relieving tension that I'd normally have. For example, 
as I said, my little finger suffers from a little bit of pain from holding shift and control during the day or uh, working or playing at games because I'm obviously if you're running in FPS games you're often holding shift down constantly and that puts an unnecessary pressure on that finger so I want to look for ways where I could alleviate that by using different fingers or maybe just having my pinky in a different position and because of the way your fingers are positioned here it gives you access to be able to do that and that's going to relieve some of that pain but also more importantly it's easy to get sort of accustomed to the fit of it because it's so comfortable and because it's so flexible with where you can position things and how many buttons you have access to you can really use this in a way that's intuitive so i think as long as you get the buttons set up in the way you want to even if that's sort of logically remapping WASD to certain keys on there in a very short period of time you should find that you can get on with it quite well it's taken me a bit longer than I like but less time than I thought it would and I'm going to play around a lot more with this I think in the future and it's certainly going to be an interesting addition to my desk it certainly stands out as my even my wife said what the hell's that thing sitting on your desk because it is unusual and obviously it's going to take up more room on your desk too because you can't use it for typing on I mean you could but you'd have to remember what switches are programmed to what key so that's quite a lot of faffing around so it will sit next to my keyboard and then just be pulled over when I'm gaming. But the advantage of this, obviously, is if you have this set up properly with all the keys you need, you can move your keyboard off the desk when you're in a gaming session. Just have your mouse and this controller side by side, which will give you a lot more mouse room, potentially. And also the fact that you can use the joystick to move around means that you can uh, assign different movements. Perhaps you can even game one handed on certain games as well. So that's pretty crazy. It's also plug and play basically. You just connect this up and use the software, and you don't have to worry because it will work with every game. It's easy to set up and easy to program. There's no faffing around. I just found immediately I could get it to work without any problems. So I'm going to dive into the software and show you what you can do with that now. Here we are with Azeron's control software. This is a fairly straightforward interface, but one of the things to note immediately is it has onboard memory. And there's two profiles. So there was a button at the back near the nameplate where mine says prawn. You can press that and you can switch between the two different profiles. Essentially, when you do it, it turns on the two lights so you know which one's which. Basically, switching it on will switch to profile two. You can see that happening now. It goes between one and two without me clicking on any buttons there. And you have the option for extra ones too. You can see you also can do settings in here. There's an option for lefty layout. So it's worth noting that you can get this controller for right-handed people and left-handed people as well. So if you're going to be using it in your right hand, you can get a version of that instead. And you can also turn the LEDs off. So those two side LEDs that I mentioned, they're quite bright and that's worth sorting out. Now the interface for changing the buttons is remarkably straightforward. You can see them all here. This is the control joystick, so you can see it in action now when I'm touching it. And you also, every button you press lights up. So I'm pressing buttons on the controller, and you'll see them lighting up on the screen here in the software. This means that you can easily sort of work out which button you want you're pressing and where you want it to be. So you can see I have W. That is essentially still my middle finger. So what I've done is I've tried to intelligently program WASD, so it's still... W, A, S, and D, except in a slightly different position. So on a normal keyboard, you'd obviously have W here, A, S, and D below that. So it'd be forward for movement and then backwards. And then you'd have left and right on this side. But instead, I've positioned those as my index finger and my ring finger, and then W's my middle finger. And that allows me to quickly do that. If I tap up with the top of my middle finger from above w i get r which is obviously going to be reload this is obviously set up for fps games but you could use it for whatever games you're playing because you can basically just click on that and then you can see what you can do with it you can use your keyboard to select a key and you can basically put any key on your keyboard so obviously you still need a keyboard plugged in to be able to do this but you can bind it to any other key you want and so you can see i've got g but maybe if i want h or something else you can choose it from there quite easily you have a number of other options here. You could, for example, assign a mouse button. You could have a mouse click on here as well, which is an interesting point of note when you consider that this has a joystick, so you could add mouse buttons to it. Then you could have movement and mouse clicks on the controller, 
which as I said earlier means that you could potentially program this so that you could play one-handed which is pretty interesting uh, I don't know how effective that would be but it's worth bearing in mind you can also get macro setups although it's worth noting this is macros are only supported in software profiles which is when that's running and you can even disable those buttons as well so you have a multitude of button presses to do here and you can see obviously you don't have as many keys in this layout as you would on your keyboard but you do have access to a multitude of buttons from each finger and i found that the position of it just makes it really good and because you have different profiles obviously you could switch between those you could have a different profile for use in windows and then a completely different one for gaming or you could have one set up for fps games perhaps and then one set up for MOBAs or MMOs. So you have options to customize it to do what you want with ease. And it's well worth playing around with these settings, customizing it, going into a game, trying, seeing, seeing how it feels and coming back out and playing around with it again. It's a fairly straightforward software. It's no frills, really. I don't think it's particularly crazy or overboard. And maybe it could do with a little bit of customization and improvement, but that can come in the future, obviously. You also get firmware updates from here as well. So you can see you have the option to install the latest firmware to make sure everything's running smoothly. So loads of different things. All in all, I really like this keypad. I think it's going to take me some time to get used to it. But once I do, it could be a really good replacement that will be a lot more comfortable to use than the standard keyboard for gaming purposes. Satisfying with the action of the switches because they're actually very satisfying to click on and a really eye-catching device plus a talking point if anybody comes to visit you can show it off and show how mad it is because it's certainly different to anything else out there this has been the provoke prawn thanks for watching this has been the provoke prawn hope you found this video useful interesting hilarious or otherwise take a look at these other videos that i think you might find interesting as well and have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my youtube channel and most importantly have a great life